they moved it over to Korea. And this was one of the big things that I found out that nobody had even, you know, uh, at the end of the war, we finally, when, when we intercepted that, that, that submarine, and that's what happened to that submarine that was bringing uranium to Japan, uh, they already had they already had it, but this was uh, I think uh, uh, separated uranium. It was it was uh, fissionable uranium, and I think when they intercepted that, we did. America did. Um, uh, it, it, it 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 it. We finally realized that hey, we never thought the Japanese were doing anything. But wait a minute, what is this submarine? This German submarine bound for for Tokyo with all this this uranium on it we we better check it out and so we organ we hastily organized a uh, what was called the atomic bomb mission and went in to japan we still didn't uncover uh, much of anything the japanese lied through their teeth and understandably uh they had just suffered the 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 the, the uh, bombing you know the first atomic bombing and seen what it done and they didn't want their people to know that they had done it too and and uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but um, uh, r- right after that, why we have uh, beaten Japan, and we need Japan as a ally against Russia. So we said, sure, we're not going to tell anybody what you did. That's fine. It'll all be top secret. You keep your secret. You help us. We just need you as a jumping-off point. But so their their pro- their their project uh, ultimately was just as um, uh, uh, successful in, in terms of, of pi- sending things out to, to other smaller uh, uh, pilot programs, developing uh, separators in order to separate the uranium and uh, also um, uh, other machinery, and they moved it over to Korea. And Korea was literally unknown to us. We, did, we weren't even bombing Korea uh, during the war. Oh, there were some minor little things. And they had this huge industrial um, uh, power over there with, 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 with more electrical power than you could ever imagine. It was through those Chosin Reservoir power plants. And that's where, uh, as, the, as the war got worse for Japan... The atomic bomb project that they had became higher and higher in priority until it was finally they you know in the in the beginning they they had hoped they could maybe use a bomb against us and bring it over by a, a bomber. Well, that was out of the question, but w- they knew they were going to be invaded they were that's when it became top priority they were going to use it on the fleet when it came in, and they were going to put it on. Uh, uh, submarines or or uh, um, uh, surface ships and move it out there. That's uh, that's all. Uh, that's a pretty long-winded uh, uh, explanation. But uh, we they had the same kind of pro- program we did. It was just in a different way. It was it was uh, uh, out in in Asia. Uh, pieces of it were working, and in, in the end, we know that the. They they had a project uh, that uh, in in Manchuria uh, that may have been just as big, but you know the Russians came in uh, at the end of the war, if you can if you recall this, and took over Japan. I believe took over excuse me uh, Korea. I believe they they were much closer to this. They knew that the that the uh, Japanese main plants were in Korea. Where in my book you will see um, uh, it has been reported many times, some top secret that that they actually exploded a bomb too late, too late. The Russians came in, and they never could use it. But that's where they ended up, and that was where we didn't have an, a, a clue about what was going on until after the war. Hey everyone, a short break on this discussion of Japan's nuclear program to discuss how you can take your mind off your current situation if you happen to be in quarantine, which most of us are. A lot of us are going a bit stir-crazy, and it helps to be transported somewhere else. And a great resource that gives you almost infinite content and allows you to mentally go almost anywhere in time and space is Audible.com. Audible is a provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, and you get access to 200,000 books. Everything from bestsellers to memoirs to history books to self-development to podcasts. 
And you can check out classic history reads like Jared Diamond's Guns, Germs, and Steel. Every month, a member gets one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection, and access to daily podcasts from The New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post. You can download a book and listen offline anytime, anywhere. You listen via an app that can be installed on smartphones and tablets, and you can listen across devices without losing your spot. You can keep your credits up to a year and use them to binge a whole series if you want to. So these days, if all you can really do when you go outside is go on a walk or go to the grocery store, Audible lets you make the most of that time by listening while you're commuting, traveling, and make it possible for you to read a book when you don't have time to otherwise. If you'd like a free audiobook, visit audible.com slash history unplugged or text history unplugged, all one word, to 500-500. Again, get a free audiobook by visiting audible.com slash history unplugged or text history unplugged to 500-500. I want to come back to this issue of what Japan was planning to do with its nuclear weapons because for whatever reason, these dark scenarios and alternate histories seem to intrigue people. But do you think that Japan would have been successful I hope you don't think this is a dark scenario like a conspiracy theory. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, This thing is very documented. It's all extremely documented. I mean, uh, I got 550 footnotes in here that document everything that's written in here. This really happened. This is not just an idea that maybe it happened. Oh, yeah, I get that. I'm uh, more curious of if it had armed a fleet of bombers. Um, We'll get back to that in a second, but um, one question I have have is from what i understand of germany's program and i'll probably get out of my death here depth here very quickly is that from refining uranium into weapons grade uranium i think germany had a problem where they assumed it would take an enormous amount to have a successful bomb whereas the united states did you refine uranium but also refine plutonium and that was a factor that helped it be successful and i'm probably getting something wrong here but From what you can tell Japan, were they on the right track and had their industrial military complex not been destroyed, do you think they would have succeeded where Germany did not succeed? Yes, I absolutely do. I believe that they actually made a bomb, and it was. this isn't just me. I mean, there are reports from our intelligence and so on that they made a bomb and exploded it. It was a, 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 a test bomb off of the coast of Korea. And if the war hadn't ended right then, which it did, this was on uh, on August 10th um, that they did this, and there's there's much uh, confirmation of this. Uh, you have to go into deep, deep secret stuff that nobody knew about or that, that, that wasn't available at the end of the war. Uh, it took someone to dig it, dig it, dig it out. There were little little blurbs about it. But anyway, they made a bomb. There are also, and I'm not an expert on 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 um, <laughs> Germany. Let me tell you, it's so I've spent decades on Japan, and I don't even speak the language. It's very very tough. But uh, there's a lot more to be learned about what Germany did. I have seen myself uh, top secret um, uh, reports, which are very valid reports. That they uh, that the Germans themselves uh, developed some sorts of uh, smaller uh, nuclear bombs up in the north, and there are um, uh, they used um, uh, concentration camp victims and so on, uh, and and fired off a couple of these. They were much more developed than we generally know. If you go and dig into it, you will find this out. But Germany is not my area. I. I actually worked with uh, uh, my assistant. Uh, I, I've kept telling him to to write a book about Germany because he knows a lot about this. That that's his particular uh, interest. And uh, there's a lot more to be learned about Germany. But uh, and there's more to be learned about what Japan did. But my book absolutely puts to rest the idea that they didn't go very far, that they didn't know very much. They got right to the edge there. Um, there's very good evidence they, they fired off a, 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 um, a test bomb uh, in, in the sea next to Korea, but the Russians came in, they took over North Korea, they 
kept everyone out, even to the point of shooting down American planes. And for three years, they looted all of the plants that the Japanese had. And as you know, the, the, the uh, Russians are the next to have the atomic bomb. And while they had spies in our plants, uh, they also had the Russian plants. And there's no question in my mind, and, and the book, I think, clearly uh, 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 doesn't just say that. It proves it. They took a lot from the Japanese plants. And um, uh, eventually, um, uh, when, when they were done in 1948, um, the Russians gave the plants back to North Korea. And that is the beginning of the North Korean uh, 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 nuclear program, which threatens us and the world today. Uh, and, and there's no question about that. The three big um, uh, scientists who are... Uh, heralded uh, in in North Korea, uh, all start at Konan, Korea, Hungnam, Korea today, which is where the uh, Japanese plants were. So uh, there's a real continuum here, and um, the only the only thing left to do is to actually um, um, I don't know go find the broken parts of the bomb uh, there on that, uh, on that shore. But um, for, I wrote two other editions of this earlier when I got onto this. I mean, this has been a long, long time study, and the Japanese would not publish them. Uh, they just published, with the publication of this one, Japan's Secret War, the third edition, they published this one because... Uh, uh, a, a Japanese general called me and he said, we didn't believe what you had written the first two times, but uh, you've proved it to us now. And, uh, you know, Japan is trying to get to take its uh, reins back and, and, and get away from America uh, uh, being our their protector and protect themselves and go nuclear again. And uh, the book is doing quite well in Japan because it's, it's opening the eyes. It had been, you know, that was big, one of the biggest secrets of the war that Japan had this bomb, tried to make it, because they have always been looked at uh, as a solely the victim of the bomb, and it's in both their interest to keep that secret, because uh, they've, they've gained so much from that. They were purely the victims and nothing else. But the fact is, they tried hard and would have used it in a second had they been able, had the Russians not come in, well, had the war not ended. We beat them to the punch. That's basically what happened. Do you know how big the test bomb was? How many kilotons or megatons? I don't. This first came right after the war. An agent for uh, for America, what was it called, the um, CIC or something, which was digging into Japan in Asia. David Snell, who became a very respected Newsweek and um, so on correspondent after the war, he wrote a big story in which he met with a Japanese officer who said they had come this far that they had actually test fired a bomb. And it, it had been made up in the Chosin Reservoir area, and then it had been brought down to the, which is about uh, 20, 30 miles, uh, maybe 50 miles. Uh, those are very, very jagged, uh, remote mountains. They brought it down uh, to the coast where it actually had been engineered and so on. And it was put on to a, they called it a launch. It was probably a 50 foot type thing. And it was puttered out into the middle, uh, maybe 30 miles away from the shore. And then it fired off. I don't know how big it was, but it wasn't as big as ours, but it definitely could have devastated a fleet that would have, um, uh, you know, would have come in and, and attacked Japan. So I don't know what the size was. Uh, what we have is his reports. And then we have after, as the war ended, uh, right after it ended, America sent what was called the atomic bomb mission in. It was just like the Alsos mission into Germany. And they interviewed all the scientists who lied through their teeth and said, oh, no, we didn't do much. We didn't do anything. And 
It was eventually realized that they had lied when at first we thought, okay, we can not worry about it. And uh, you remember the incident where all of a sudden uh, America uh, took all of the cyclotrons in Japan, which they had some very big ones that, uh, when the war.